But I'm yeah. sure I was going to get off that. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, I haven't, haven't played with that. The, they, you can get them on Amazon, too. I think they call them power packs or whatever, power or battery pack for your... Because a lot of people, they sell them as phone uh, to charge your phone. Yeah. So when your battery dies, you can get one. And they all come in different, like, amperage um, or uh, kilowatt or not. Is it amps? Or whatever. Yeah. KBM. So, so this, this is like yeah. a three milliamp or something like that. It's yeah. usually in the thousands. Um, yeah, like, three thousand milliamp or something. Like the like average that. one you find at uh, like Target, it's going to be like twenty six hundred. Two thousand two hundred milliamp. Yeah. Okay. So this is ten dollars. I have one that's like a three. Or, you know, it's like three times that. I don't know. That's six thousand milliamp for thirty dollars. Yeah, you can get one. I think on the Amazon you can get an 8,000 one for 40 or 50 bucks. And I've seen for $100 you can get one that will start a car. Three times. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> they also sell them where they use uh, just AA batteries. So you can pop those in, yeah. yeah and we get rechargeable ones then. But yeah, they're not rechargeable in that case, but um, for like a power outage, you should be able to charge your cell phone yep. or run your Raspberry Pi web server. You can run off batteries. Um, well, so let me jump back to an earlier question because uh, you know I want to give everybody a chance to talk. So a little lull in the moment here. So uses for the Raspberry Pi, and this is just a real short list of things that I thought of as we're sitting. Web server, we mentioned that. Uh, obviously, learning programming and anything having to do with open source. And if you have a small child and you're trying to get them to be a little more, you know, into science and the STEM thing, out of your, you know, science, technology, whatever, math. And, you know, yeah. And so um, this gives them a real cheap thing that they can, you know, it's like a toy, you know, you're, you're spending more on toys, right? Um, and so I just mentioned VNC so you can connect up. Um, media player, and Tony had a presentation on media center, you know, capabilities and, and you know, all this good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, something called a beacon. I don't know if you're all familiar with that yet. That's kind of kind of thing that hasn't really taken off yet. So you go into like your uh, your retail store, and they have like a little device stuck on a wall or somewhere that broadcasts information. We're having shoes on sale. So um, some of the big retailers are just starting to do this type of thing. So you have a phone app, and all the iPhones have this app already. It's, it's already provided. Uh, it's an easy download for the rest of us. Um, and it basically will provide information on whatever that beacon is broadcasting. Um, so I set up a beacon using the Raspberry Pi. It's, you know, so I took a $35 Raspberry Pi and turned it into a $2 beacon. <laughs> but you know, it was something interesting to do and all that. Uh, and that way you don't have to wait for the delivery from, from China for your $2 beacons, right? Uh, so now you can also set that up as, as some kind of feedback, right? So now the, two, the beacon, uh, the Raspberry Pi, whatever, talks to your cell phone or talks to some other devices and then sends that back up to a website and things like that. So uh, one of the interesting innovations that I've seen, uh, this is at a Ford Innovation uh, thing, was these guys came up with this app basically running on uh, a cell phone, it could be a Raspberry Pi, whatever, that when it gets close to a beacon, and then it knows that the car has arrived at a certain location. So they were using this for like charging stations for the electric vehicles. Is that charging station being used? Well, you, you, when the car comes up, it registers that that car has just you know allocated that particular charging station. So other people who are looking for charging stations that are available won't come to that charging station. Just a very convenient kind. Of. So I imagine eventually we'll get to the point where our cars will be tracked and we'll have all kinds of capabilities for learning about what's going on. I don't know, you know, so like urbanizing the, the industry and stuff like that. So the cars will come into an area and you'll want a parking spot. They say that a lot of fuel is wasted on finding a parking spot. So now you'll eventually get to the point where you know these little beacons and things like that will know where the cars are and that type of thing. So I think Raspberry Pi comes a very cheap way to get into that, you know, as a hobbyist learning how to play with this type of thing. A STEM thing, that's an app. Is that an app? Or you STEM just... is uh, a concept for educating basically children, uh, trying to get women into uh, science, technology, engineering, math, right? Okay. So it's, it's an incentive to try to get kids interested in the technical stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've also seen projects where uh, you've heard of the um, thermostat, the, what's the, yeah. the yes. nest, yeah. You can build your own nest out of a Raspberry Pi, uh, and it's like half the price, and it's all contained inside your house. It's not going out to some cloud 
that they're tracking your usage of your house. Yeah, my thermostat recently went out of my house, and I asked the guy who was installing, well, can you put one of those Wi-Fi Corona? Oh, yeah, $400. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and, and when you have that set up, then you can start zoning your house. So you can have a zone in every single room of your house where each room is you know, temperature controlled separately. Yeah, that's uh, really nice. We have a, a larger home down in Texas, and we get different zones. It'd be yeah. really cool to be able to do that electronically. So before I get home, the lower level is he, you know, warmed up or whatever. And yeah. Eventually, get to the point where the car is in a neighborhood coming home, and it recognizes, oh, I should probably, you know, get it's yeah, too. Yeah, you can. You then pair it up with an app on your phone that says once you hit this point and you drive home, it starts changing your temp uh, to make it warmer, colder, or whatever. Right. So part of this is uh, this concept of tethering the device to the internet, that type of thing. So if you have a device, say you have your cell phone or something like that, you want Wi-Fi access to the internet, currently you use your cell phone as a cellular type of connection. Eventually you get to the point where the cars will have embedded modems you know, with the, the Wi-Fi and all that stuff provided to everybody who's sitting in the vehicle. Um, so I think that you know, we get real intelligence with these low-cost computers sitting around mm -hmm. wherever we are we'll have a lot of capabilities for you know, tethering our devices to the internet and to other devices. So the Raspberry Pi becomes a real powerful platform for playing with this up front. Uh, we also mentioned, you know, someone was saying something about can you hook the camera up to it and things like that. So I basically plug in a, a Wi-Fi enabled uh, device, right, I can get the uh, Raspberry Pi to do that. I don't do that with other USB devices, right, so there's a USB camera that I have, I put the USB camera in and the, the camera has you have to be technically you know, aware that there's, there's software that runs most devices, so you have to have the drivers, they call the, the software called drivers, that make the, that device work with that environment. So I have a, a webcam that has a driver as part of the, the webcam. So I just plug it in the USB and the, the camera works with, uh, and you, know, you have to do like, a, you know, making sure that you have all the software working together. Um, but it was a really easy thing, and then I could use that as uh, like a guardian kind of security thing. You know, I could set that up in my home, have it uh, do a security camera, you know, for watching the, 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 you know, see if there's bad people in the house or whatever. Yeah, um, the software built in with that's running the camera, you, you have running the camera, well, it has motion sensing also. So whenever somebody walks in front of your door or whatever, it starts snapping pictures of them. Right, so you have thousands of pictures of the neighbor's cat, you know, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, so I know someone Someone mentioned briefly this idea of a weather station. So I know a guy I worked with who, who built a weather station and basically set it up so he could tell what the weather is at home from anywhere in the world. You know, go out to his website and, and read the information about what the temperature is and such uh, from any of these sensors that he has connected to the Raspberry Pi. And then I'd also mention there's a lot of things that uh, we, we basically technical geeky people from the old school uh, had trouble getting to work you know, uh, we had to buy a device to do uh, IP addressing and DHCP and emails and stuff like that. Um, so you could do that now really cheap. You can have a cheap device that would, you know, serve up uh, IP addresses or provide services like print serving and things like that rather than having your big expensive computer do that. Um, not that there would be anybody who would, like, use an email server in their own private home for anything, like, politically technical, you know, uh, that, uh, sorry, that's a joke, there was a, you know, Clinton. someone recently did that. Um, mm -hmm. So you have to be careful about how you use these things as well. I mean, so you're, you're going to be using a device in a way that other people aren't quite up to speed understanding, so a little bit of caution about, you're taking this to work and plugging it into the, to the network at work, probably not a good idea at this point. One quick question regarding the automated project. Uh, are you tracking the GPS coordinates and processing that? Um, no, so for my setup, I'm not keeping track of any of that. Um, I'm just using it as a display. I do like that idea. Um, I have read that there have been a number of court cases that have been thrown out because a person had their GPS logs available to prove that they weren't speeding. And I'm sure they had to remove the portion of the logs that showed they were speeding before the cop saw them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, it's so something I'd like input, to do. What but is the input signal? To, uh, how do you process the? How do you uh, output the, uh, getting the speed? How do you do that? So the GPS module I have, um, it actually calculates out the speed. 
So I can just read from it of what the current uh, speed is. And then I can pull my GPS coordinates and all that as well. Um, initially, the way I was planning on doing it was I got an electronic module that hooks up to the front tire that counts the rotations. Mm -hmm. um, the issue with that is once you go faster than like 20 miles an hour, the tire is spinning so fast that the Raspberry Pi can't um, see those, it can't read them quick enough. So it ends up missing them. Um, and the module I got did not send a signal every one rotation, it sent a sign graph. So sign officer, up. obviously I was only going 20 miles an hour, see the, yeah, the number see? of times the wheel rolled the <laughs> <laughs> But is it easy to track the coordinates? Um, yeah, it's fairly easy. It's just, yeah, it's just reading the, there's a simple command, you run it, it gives okay. you the information. You parse through that information to get, you know, which line you want. So, you, you bought that and did you load anything on there? Um, so I loaded a um, Raspberry Pi image called Fedora. Okay. Um, it's, um, I, I work for a company called Red Hat. And Fedora's oh. our yeah. main project, community project. Community project. <laughs> um, so I'm a little biased towards using Fedora compared to Raspbian or um, one of the other things. Um, but any any real operating system would work. The key was I needed a operating system that had the drivers for this, oh. um, which is pretty much any desktop operating system does. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to use this with the RetroPie or one of the gaming ones. Well, let's see, there's like a whole other topic here that uh, we haven't really gotten into that a lot of people are very interested in related to Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's remote control. So um, basically we've been talking about you connect a device to the Raspberry Pi to control that device. And now suppose instead of you being at a keyboard that's physically connected to that device, you're on the other side of the planet or you know a different room or whatever. Um, there's been you know a lot of interesting things with people connecting Raspberry Pi to. Uh,